Well, welcome back. And look who we've just happened to find in the hallways backstage at Hillsong Conference. We told you, there's everybody here backstage and we have John Maxwell with us. Thank you, John. Thanks for spending some time with us. Wonderful. It's my privilege. Great to be with you. What an exciting place, huh? Incredible, incredible. It's now, you spoke uh, yesterday and you've been uh, at Hillsong Church across the weekend. It's a great blessing to sit under your ministry. You, I think, if I can say so, if you don't mind me saying so, I think you're one of the easiest preachers to listen to. I feel like I'm the only one in the room. Thank you. There's John Maxwell on the stage and you're teaching thank me. You. That's how I feel. Well, I, thank you. I, that's what I want you to feel because you are. I try to, even though it's a lot of people, uh, that's one of the reasons I sit down. <laughs> I, I want to be conversational with people. I, I want to. I want to connect with them. I learned a long time ago. You don't try to connect with a lot of people. You just connect with individuals. Mm -hmm. If you connect with individual, individuals, you connect with a lot of people. So yeah, well, I think you do that Thank greater you. than anybody else. Well, well, clearly, I, it's something that is is not just something that you do, but it's something that you are really genuine about. It's not that. It's yeah, a, what's a who gift I am? So I, mean, yeah, I, I, I think the key to anybody in successfully communicating is being themselves. Mm -hmm. Now, you want to be the best in yourself. So what you do is you find out what your strength is, what your niche is, and then you work very hard on the communication craft. But you got to be yourself. You know, don't be David trying to put on Saul's armor. Just, you know, just doesn't work. Yeah, now, that's exactly right. when did you discover that leadership was your thing? In 19, you know, so I'm glad you asked that question. In 1976, on the 4th of July, uh, which is our country's uh, birthday, and it happened to be happened to be the 200th birthday. I was a pastor of a church of about 5,000. What do I be, 28? And while I was preaching, God really called me to train leaders, and I never even thought about it. it I was wasn't even preaching on the subject, and all of a sudden I realized my calling is to train leaders. And what was that? 35 years ago, and it's uh, it's as fresh and as real and right uh, today as it was was then. Mm. And I think, if I can say this again, I think you're a leader in, in leading and teaching leadership to the church and to the world, to the corporate and business world. You just you just teach the truth in the, uh, of leadership. How do you find that in working in both spheres, if you see, or do you see it as one sphere? Well, the, the, the principles, whether it's in the church world, the business world, they're the same. Mm. Because they're, they're just good, biblical, life-changing, life-breathing leadership principles. Mm. So, the difference is when I'm in the business world, I've got to I've got to contextualize them in a in a culture that they understand. Mm. So I mean, you know, I don't quote scripture or you know what I'm saying when I'm at Microsoft or sure. whatever. But the principles are the same. In fact, because I had a pastoral background and I was used to preaching, uh, when I started doing the business community, I, I, I kind of felt like, oh, my, I'm cheating God, but I'm not when I'm not giving scripture. You know what I mean? Mm. And one day, I just because I'm talking to God, I'm saying, you know. I'm not really doing it because I know I can't do You can't do scripture. And God said, John, you just take the biblical principles and the Holy Spirit will do the work. And what, with the moment I realized that the biblical principle works, whether it's a church community or a, a business community, then I got really released and freed up. It's kind of like, okay, then I, I, I'll do this. So that's what I do. I, I just continually do my, uh, what I would call the... Uh, uh, biblical principles in the right context, whether it's business or the church, and, and then watch the Spirit of God uh, make the difference. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. yeah. For me personally, just to share a little anecdote, in my early 20s, which is not very long ago, yeah, um, it was when a I... A year or two. A year or two ago, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was when I first was exposed to your teaching and your books, and, and I would say that in, in my Christian walk, and having grown up as a Christian, that that has probably been the most significant for me in terms of training my mind to to even understand different, yeah. to, to learn really. And mm. and so I was excited for you to be back here again this year and then sitting listening to you on Sunday when you spoke at church and as a, mo a mother now, when you spoke yeah. about your children and your grandchildren and how, um, I can't remember if you said you, you didn't get an allowance when you were young. Was it your father that? Yeah, no, he, he didn't give us an allowance to do chores. Yes. In the yes. States, I don't know if it is in Australia so much, but in the States, Children get allowance to do like you know uh, chores, yeah. household oh, chores. It's the same. Yeah. yeah. And, and so that's very, very common, very common. And all of my friends got allowance to do chores, but I didn't. And uh, you know, I kind of thought, I think I'm getting cheated here. So I went to my dad and said, Hey, you know, my buddy Phil, he gets an allowance, and Bill gets an allowance for, for you know doing chores. And I think that'd be a good thing for us. <laughs> my dad looked at me and said, You're not getting an allowance for doing chores. And you know, I said, Why? He said, Well, you, you do chores because you're part of the family, and I don't pay you to be part of the family. And then my dad, I love. 
He has a sense of humor. He said, John, he said, by the time you were born, you already owed your mother for nine months of room and board. So yeah, you know, shut up and take out the garbage. You're not going to get an allowance for, for that. But he gave us an allowance for reading books. Mm-hmm. And that was huge. In other words, he, from the seventh grade on, my father picked out all, my, all the books that I read. And we had to read. We were required to read 30 minutes every day. And so he would pick out the book, we'd read the book, then we'd talk about it around the dinner table tonight. When we finished the book and we kind of discussed it, he would pay us whatever he bought the book for. Now, back then it was, what, a dollar? <laughs> back in the old days, you know, but then he'd give us a dollar. But, but whatever he, whatever he uh, bought the book for, he'd do that. And, and so I did that for my children. And now I'm doing it for my grandchildren. And I can tell you, it really pays because you just, you're just absolutely putting their minds into, into some great fertile soil that will just reap a great harvest for them. Yeah, that's well, I love the term that you used on Sunday, which was the values thing. So was, as I went away and thought about it, it was this values-based it, almost reward system as opposed to a do this job and you do it, but well, it's like based that. on values. It, uh, yeah, so. Absolutely. And my father, my father would say, that. he would look at me and say, I put my money where my values are. Mm. And my values are in reading good books. Mm. And, and, and then he would every once in a while say, John, if I wanted you to grow up and be a garbage man, then I'd pay you to take out the garbage. But I don't want you to grow up and go over yeah. I want you. I want you to grow up and have a great mind and, and, and help people. And, and so I've got to put great people and books into your life. He not only he not only did that with books, but he was a university president. And, and so he would take us out of school all the time and, and take us to conferences. And, and he just he would just say, you're going to be with me today, and we're going to go. And so I met, when I was in seventh grade, I met Norman Vincent Peale, who was a a uh, mentor of my dad's and, and when I was a freshman I, you know East Stanley Jones laid his hand on and prayed over me so here I am as a kid my father's just helping me to meet people that are very um, uh, influential in the kingdom of God and I'm, I'm meeting them and, and uh, I, I just believe I just believe it it's, it's called the hot poker principle put the in your stoke of fire you put the poker in the fire it stays hot move it away and it gets cold so you just gotta you gotta Get your mind where it needs to be. You got to get your got to get your heart where it needs to be, and then just let it burn. Yeah, it's terrific. Let's learn a little bit of, about John Maxwell. How do you take your coffee? I don't drink coffee. You don't drink coffee. <laughs> Every, everybody's giving us that answer. No, this no, week. no. What's funny is, well, no way you think of in the states. There's a coffee named Maxwell House. I don't sure. know if that's a, sure. is that a, yeah. is that in Australia? Yeah, it is. So you think of the name Maxwell, you drink coffee. I love to smell it, but I don't like taste it. Okay. All right. so, well, that's interesting to know. So I drink, I, I drink my favorite beverage is Diet Dr. Pepper Cherry. Oh, really? Yeah, that's yeah. I, I, I can yeah. see you hate that, right? Well, uh, 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 maybe, maybe Dr. Pepper is to Australians what Vegemite, if you know what Vegemite is, to American Vegemite. Yeah, it's like a, yeah, yeah. a savory paste. Most of them are Yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah. No, no, I think probably. Well, let's try another question. What's the first thing you do when you put your feet on the ground in the morning? When you get out of bed, you get up, what's the very first thing that you first do? First thing I do is I... Uh, Ask God to help me to add value to people. That's my first exercise every morning. The first thing I do every morning is I, I say, God, who can I add value to and, 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 and how can I do it? And the last thing I do every night is I ask God, did I add value to people? And it's kind of a, I don't know, I call it the bookends of my day. Yeah, you know, that's, right. that's, that's what I do. That's kind of, it just kind of keeps me intentional, yeah. focused yeah. on what I need to be focused on. That's really good. Well, who is someone no longer with us, or somebody that's passed that you really would love to have met? Oh, Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa. Oh, I'd have loved to have met Mother Teresa. What's interesting, she knew about me, and I knew about her, and we corresponded, but we never I never got to meet her personally. But my son, I, when he was 16, we sent him to India for a month just to be in Calcutta and be in the food serving line and he was kind of living too high on the hog with us and we decided we needed to <laughs> take him somewhere where there was a lot of poverty you know kind of give him another perspective and I and so anyway he was there for a month and I and so I told him that if he would do go for a month I would get him I would have asked Mother Teresa to have an audience with him and she gave him a 20 minute private wow. audience and he's got a picture of her so he and what's funny is about three months after he was there she died so I've always said Joel you killed Mother Teresa oh. you know. Go. You can't say that. Tracy, she's, she's just laying around. <laughs>